is Nick Jackson, and this is your One Word Wednesday. I'm here with my friend. I'm here with a, a new friend, and also an entrepreneur, and just an absolutely butt kicker in the world of culture. This is Kevin Mackey. Kevin Mackey, say hello to me. Everybody, it's so excited to be here, Nick. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to talk about things that we're doing culturally, things that matter to me that I've learned throughout my career, and just really, really excited to be able to talk to you today. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, now I gotta ask this question, Kevin. The word today is unity. When you hear this word, unity, what comes to your mind? Yeah, I thought about this in advance of today's conversation. So for me, when I think of unity, I think of not having to try to get your opinion out there, to matter. And if you have unity, it means that I can listen to what you are saying mm -hmm. and give an objective response to it that is natural to me without having there be any premonition as to what you're saying, how I'm saying it to you, because there is that degree of unity. There's that degree of trust. And mm -hmm. it's almost as if unity is almost like this desired end state. I don't know how often we experience true unity in our day-to-day -day life, but I think that we should absolutely be trying to build there, which is why I'm really excited to talk about this today. Yeah, man. You know what I was just thinking about when you were saying that? I was thinking to myself it, it, with unity, right? I was thinking to myself, there, there is no, 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 no me without you. Like we're together. Like yes. we're combined, we're conjoined, right? Like, 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 like if, if there's a pain that goes on in your life, there's a pain that goes on in my life. If there's issues that's going on in your house, there's issues that going on that's going on in my house. Like we are connected and it's, and it's like an honor to be united with one another. It is. It's an awareness. It's exactly mm -hmm. what you said. Because, uh, I mean, we've all, I've lived in a house with many people, with brothers. And, you know, as a result of all of these experiences living next to people, you begin to read. You begin to read them. You know, you can tell when your kids or your significant other is upset about something. And I think that the same thing is true is giving that empathetic respect to the person that you are with. Uh, yeah. I know that Nick, in several of our first conversations, they were even on the phone because I love to just talk and be able to give my full undivided attention to the things that you're saying. And I think that if we're able to do more of that, if we're able to sit down and listen and truly understand where are you coming from, isn't that in essence what unity is? That yeah. is what we're going for in these conversations. And I think that as we begin to live that more and more, at least this is what we try and do at our company, is listen, is come to each other with a where, where are you truly coming from? How can right. I understand you more deeply? And I think that on a business sense and on a personal sense, it really helps you, it brings you closer to the people that you're choosing to interact with. And I mm. think that it's so much more wholesome. So I, I got I want to go into business, but I also want to go into, into, the, into the basically your life, like your world, right? What is disunity? What, is, what, is, what does it look like when, when we have the opposite of unity? When somebody else's agenda is being forced upon me, and in particular, when I don't agree with it. You know, if, if I know or if I just have that sense that somebody else wants to get something out of me that is inorganic, that, it, that doesn't have anything to do with actually me, you haven't, you haven't asked me any questions, you haven't talked to me about what I think, and yet you're going to kind of tell me what I should think, that's disunity. And I, I think that, again, pe people just have these human alarms that come up. And, and, you know, we can use a lot of words for that. It could be distrust. Um, but I think that when our walls come up, it's because it's like somebody is trying to bring themselves into your space without you either acknowledging it or, more importantly, without there being that back and forth flow of, like, I get this. And we mm. have are on the same page. I'm allowing you to come in. And I think that yes. if those people allow for that, there's, you know, kind of this invisible, this bond that mm -hmm. is able to bring you together. But the opposite is true, too. So unity and disunity, I mean, they really do kind of have these opposite ends of the spectrum. But at any state, at any given point in time, I don't think, you know, you could say, well, I feel unity now or I feel disunity. But right. it really is what leads up to it. And all the things that happen afterwards that you reflect in those words, unity or disunity. You know, it's so interesting. I, I remember walking down the street and hearing uh, a young kid say Black Lives Matter and, and some other person of, of a lighter hue screamed out all lives matter. And, and I noticed that there was no there was no intimacy. There was no unity there. 
Like, like I, I don't know if the Black Lives Matter kid was saying that all lives didn't matter. And I don't know if all lives matter is saying that Black lives don't matter. Do you know what I'm saying? But what I do know is, is that the, the, the disparity was in age. Like, one of them was a child and one was an adult. And the adults sounded like they were saying, shut up. Right, like, like it looked like it felt like they were saying, "Stop talking." Right, when, it, when instead it would have been so impactful for that adult to say, "What does this mean when you say it?" You know, yeah. why are you saying this? Now I know you're you're in the world just like I am, and I want to talk about it, it business and all these other kind of things too. But as as a, as a person of a lighter hue, how do you answer this question? Yeah, I think that actually it is reflective in the things that you had said as I heard you talking about that. The thought that crossed my mind is that they just fundamentally dissed you. They did not even think about where you were coming from. So they took something in, and then they told you what you were thinking about it. All Lives Matter, well, maybe that's just a comment. But what I was saying to you in terms of Black Lives Matters really mattered to me. Mm. And that's where I think that it's like, not only did you not hear that, but you stopped it. You stopped my momentum. Mm. And that's bothersome, I think, because what we're trying to do is gain momentum in a different way of thinking, in a different way of being. And things like mm. that just aren't unhelpful. And then you devolve into the series of conversation, well, all lives do matter. Well, sure, we're not trying to have a legal argument here. We're trying right. to understand where people are coming from and build on that momentum so that we don't have to have these conversations anymore. At least that's my I opinion. I got to tell you, so when I look at the news, it, it, it's one thing. But when I think about my life and, and, and the injustice that I have seen and I have felt and, and in other people that may have looked like me, it, it is a question mark at the end of the statement, Black Lives Matter, to me, right? And, and, and I'm black, you know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm watching the, the, not only the disparity, but I'm watching things and I'm watching with my own physical eyes, not, not what I've saw on, on somebody else's video cam or somebody else's camera phone. I'm watching with my own eyes things that I see as being injustice. And sometimes when I even thought about the, the Black Lives Matter movement, I'm like, do we? Like, 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 do, do we matter? I mean, outside of Michael Jordan and, 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 and Muhammad Ali, like, do, do, do we all matter? What's your thought to that? It's a very existential thought. Um, I, I would rather take the positive because I spent so much time thinking about that in the negative uh, at past points in my life. Um, I do think that we all matter. And I do think that we, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to lump you into the same type of age range. I think that our age range wants to think about an experience life differently. And at least that, that's what I begin to reflect on is what are all these things that all of us uh, of our age have been told matter or don't matter? And, and how do we feel about those things? Uh, I mean, uh, I just I have thought so many times in my life, uh, and this is in particular when I was younger and didn't really have a, a lot of in-depth thought, I just would think like, that doesn't matter to me. I, I do not care. Uh, mm. And yet society and influences around me were saying, you know, you really need to care about these things. And it just, it clashed with, with how I felt. And, and I feel like where we are age wise is that we're beginning to discern those things that matter to us really freaking matter versus things that don't. And I think that if we're able to be very precise and we're able to communicate those things that matter, we're going to be able to see those consistencies and sexual orientation, mm. race, those things uh, I hope they do matter but I, I hope that they begin to lessen in our conversations because we're just talking because we're just right. trying to figure things out in this world for all of us, and not just for one person's agenda that is trying to be bestowed upon another and then another and then all of a sudden you get this ping pong match where everyone's batting around and nothing really ever happens I'm tired of nothing happening right. You know, it's so funny, right? So as, as you were replying to that comment, my phone was going off. And, and, and it's crazy because there, and there's so many times in our life where there's all this distraction and all of this noise, right? I got to ask you a straight up honest question. Do you believe that white lives matter? I do. I believe, uh, I can't believe that I was going to say it. I do believe that all lives matter. Um, but even as you were asking that question, I've never been asked that before. I've mm -hmm. never had to think about it. Um, because my inherent response is all lives matter. Dogs' lives matter to me. Um, I mean, that, that's a thing where I think that the language that we now need to speak, um, it does need to include those types of challenges. And just the simple fact that I've never been asked that before doesn't mean that I shouldn't internalize that. 
And I think that actually I'd love to come back on this show sometime. And you can ask me that question again in six months and <laughs> where, where my answer goes. Because I do want to say that, yes, all lives matter. But I guess as the operator and the entrepreneur in me, I almost instantly go into, well, let's begin to actually live upon that. One thing about me is that I do find that there is, um, there's, a, there's a lot of capability to talk. I think that in the social media age, in the video age, in the Zoom age, we have gotten used to speaking on a screen. And I think yeah. that there's a lot of value in that. I also think that there's a lot of just fluff in that sometimes. You need to have both. And what, mm -hmm. I, what I would like to do with, again, my company and myself, because at some points these things are intertwined, but with my children and myself yeah. as a father, is I want to be able to say the words that I genuinely mean. Because then mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I'm thinking about how I need to respond. I'm just being myself. And I think that if we challenge our thought processes and our beliefs, in a given moment, you will bring yourself into a conversation for the better or for the worse. And I think that what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how to do that for the better, or at least that's, that's what I want to do. And that's what I hope other people want to do as well. I got to ask you this question though, because I, because I know you're an entrepreneur, right? And, and I know you're the COO of a, of a, of a company that's growing and, 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 and working well, right? Now, how do you bring this ideology that you're talking about with all lives do all lives matter? And, and also when you were talking about being able to, to look at the individual person as the individual person matters, how do you do that and still do business? Yeah. Um, it starts in conversation number one, I believe. Uh, in every single time that I'm interviewing for a role, every single time that I'm speaking with somebody new, um, the first, I, I want to get to know you. Um, most of the time, I don't really even come in with like this bombastic, like, oh, we're going to talk about coterie and no, uh, we're doing great things. Like, we'll talk about that later. Um, how am I going to talk to you about anything that matters to you if I don't know who you are? And if I don't know truly what matters to you there, I've developed some of these philosophies a long time ago where sometimes I'll just ask a question, not really caring what the answer is. I want to hear what your answer is, because if you mm -hmm. say something that is top of mind, you've probably been thinking about it. It probably matters to you emotionally in some way, shape or form. And then I can really get to know you if I hear what your answer is. And then I ask you a follow up question about what you think about that thing or how you, mm -hmm. approach that thing. because then we're really getting into who you are. And so, again, kind of starting with personal relationships, which as a, you know, when you found a company, it's just you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. You yeah. And, the dog and a couple of other people. So, you know, you're kind of living in your head. Um, mm -hmm. But as you enroll more people in what you're doing, those words matter, but they'll only stick around if you act. That is what I've kind of grown to from a philosophical, from an approach perspective, again, with my children, just as much as with my employees and with my colleagues is mm -hmm. how can I get to know you and have that relationship with you so that when we're going to have a trusted conversation, you know we're having a trusted conversation. On the professional right. side, when I need to deliver maybe some hard feedback, that I can deliver that hard feedback because we have that environment. We've mm -hmm. created that environment where we know that there is trust, love, and appreciation. And that has nothing to do with anything other than me and you. Right. And honestly, um, how I would like to do that. Now, how you scale that at an organization is probably a topic for another day. Mm -hmm. But that's the intent is to be able to have things feel personal and feel small, even as we are growing and even as we are getting bigger. Um, I do talk a lot about culture, uh, and this is kind of hold on. Hold on. Can, I, can I cut you real quick? I, I really want to. I really want to talk about this in the form of unity. So the the one thing that that I see is kind of an issue that comes about is that I I think you're my boss. So as my boss, I don't want to, I don't want to get myself in trouble. And I know for me personally, me, I've been taught how to code switch in hopes that you, because of how you look, right, you may be nicer to me or more comfortable with me being here. Now, where am I, where in your in, in your company or where in your in your ethos or in, 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 in your surrounding areas, do, do you make sure people are allowed? to let go of their issues from before they even met you. How do you deal with that process so they can see you as a human being and not a boss? Yeah, words matter. Uh, tone matters, language matters. Um, questions matter. Uh, if I'm going to talk at you, then you're going to feel the need to code switch probably, right? Because right. you're responding to me. It goes back to that inherent position 
of power and authority. And mm -hmm. I think the idea of power and authority in business has been misused, abused even in some respect. And what I mean by that is that if I'm always going to be lording over you, then we can't have a relationship because yeah. inherently there's going to be something that's missing. Um, mm -hmm. There needs to be organizational structure. And so I think that being clear about these types of language, again, if I'm dealing with you know kids or if I'm coaching, it, it's a different type of context, but it still requires that circumstance. It requires that understanding of how are we all coming together? Are we coming together in a casual setting? Because then you can be more casual while still delivering a similar type of message. In a professional circumstance, I do think that it is helpful to say things like, if I am somebody's boss, so I'm going to be your thinking partner. And I'm going to be the person that is responsible for ultimately helping us determine what is going to be our best approach to all of our work. But I want to be your thinking partner before I'm your boss. I will tell you things to do, but here's how I'm going to be. And then once you give people that, I talk about explicit authority or explicit permission all the time. When you give people explicit authority to be themselves, an amazing thing happens. They do it. Mm -hmm. And they usually do it with a greater degree of, let's say, uncomplication. And I think that all of these things kind of coming full circle, all of that breeds unity. And if there is this sense of unity among the people around you, I think this gets into then just human psychology, is when you feel trusted, when you are with your group, whoever that group is, whatever that group is, you feel more secure. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. that we're, we're a pack animals, uh, whether we want to realize it or not. So who is our group and how are you trusted? And I think that if we reshape that conversation for people of our age, then there are going to be things that we just, again, I hope that we don't talk about because we've got these groups and groups attract like-minded people and like-minded mm -hmm. people tend to do really cool things. And I, I really believe that if you're able to see that cycle of improvement happening, then it just begins to self-reinforce. I love it. These are all, these are all ideas that I want to, again, this is the importance of living it, is mm -hmm. I could talk all day long, but if we're not living it and showing it and giving people a standard to say, this is how we know that it can be done, while even, again, going back to the professional sense, while still being very ambitious, while mm -hmm. still wanting to go out and make money, while wanting to go out and succeed. I believe that all of these things can happen and can actually happen with unity. Um, mm -hmm, we, right. And we have to, to do the right things. So we have to say the right words. And we have to get that enrollment from the people around us. And that's what we intend to do. Or at least I intend to do that. I got to tell you, so I remember hearing this saying, hurt people hurt people. And yeah. I know I've been in cultures and I've been under bosses that were hurting and I hurt too. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get the heck out of that company. Right. And then, but, but the one thing that people usually don't say is that loved people love people. Like, and that, that's, that's what it is. And, 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 and I, I can tell that this, this cultural thing means something to you. And then when I say culture, I mean culture within your business, within your home, and within your life. Now, I know we only got a little bit of time left, but I need you to explain why and how this works in your life. Exactly, yeah. Um, through a lot of introspection, um, through a lot of nights where I wasn't happy with how things were going or with the thoughts that were going through my head or fears or just things that honestly, uh, I, you know, I think are very natural, but if you're always living, you know, through a fear based lens, that's, what's going to come back. So it's this weird mirroring exercise where if my lens is fear, if my lens is distrust, then in some way, shape or form, there might be something that I am doing to actually bring that to myself. And so I think that after having a lot of these realizations of how I wanted to be and honestly going to therapy and talking with a lot of folks and just trying to be as introspective as possible, I kind of came to this realization about how I wanted to be. Um, right. There's so many outside influences and so many different thoughts and, and approaches and, and ways to do things. I think that once it becomes native to you and you have a purpose and you have a vision, it makes it a lot easier to go out and, and live that. Um, and so I guess that to me, is what I mean by culture, is that you've got, uh, you know, you could, you could replace the word culture probably with unity, or you could use them right. synonymously, because to me, you know, culture is an environment. Unity is an environment. Love, in some respect, is an environment. It might be an end state, but I don't know that we ever reach that end state. Mm. Uh, you know, 
I don't know that I ever want to reach that end state because it might mean that I'm dead. So uh, yeah. I'd rather be constantly trying to, to get to that end state while I'm alive and, and influencing those ripple effects around me um, because we do only have that one life. And, you know, I do believe that we can do it better. Honestly, I think that we can all do better and I can do better. And, you know, it starts with me, I guess. Uh, at least it, for me, it starts with me. For you, it starts with you. But all of us, culture, you know, culture, it starts with that. I got to tell you, when we first met and when I first got to talk to you, I didn't get to see your face. I, I, did, I didn't necessarily know that you had glasses. I didn't know you had facial hair too. I didn't know the hue of your skin. But the one thing that I loved the most about you and the one thing that I appreciated about you was that I felt like I was allowed to talk. And I, and, and I felt like I was, I, I was, I was, I was invited into this level of, of bonding, this unity. And for me, as, as the, 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 the CEO and founder of Speak Love, I want to thank you for providing that for me. And I know if you're providing that for me, you're probably providing it for everybody that you're working with too. And, and, and that means something in our culture right now. Yeah, same, same with you. I, mean, uh, I felt the exact same way about you. Mm -hmm. um, people that are watching this on dual screens, I hope that they would actually say the same thing about both of us. And that's why we're working together because I know that I have a lot to learn from you um, I hope that you would have a lot to learn from me because I think that that's what unity is, mm -hmm. is how can we just kind of crawl into those past experiences and understand what, what it means to you. You know, what is the fiber of your being? Because the fiber of your being indicates how you show up every day. You know, they're, that, that's why we have good and bad days. The fiber <laughs> of our being, some days you don't really want to get out of bed and you know, it, it's fine to be lazy. Some days you have a rocket attached to yourself and you're out of bed and you're just, you know, you're a mile a minute. Like that's all a part of our being. And I think that instead of trying to like go away from that, I've learned in the past decade or so to just truly lean into it and, mm -hmm. and lean on your own energy and lean on the energy of others. And, um, I actually, I did have a, a shrink one time tell me the, the simplest thing. I mean, I was struggling with something at work and she told me, why are you allowing yourself to be in these positions where everything is taking away from your energy? Why don't you just help stuff that gives you energy? And I just thought about it for a second. And I was like, well, that's really simple. What an idiot I am. Why am I not doing that? And it's just so easy to not do it that uh, I think that all of these experiences, again, uh, I can get long winded in these things, but I, I definitely think that you bring that to that given moment in time. And I truly believe that most people want to live the fullest out of their life. And if you're able to tap into that and share a vision, then you are really starting something. Mm. All right, last thought. This is it. This is it. Now, the word is unity. If you have one more thing to say to a nation of people, one minute or less, what do you have to say? Let's inspire each other to get to a point of unity. Uh, you know, I, this, this conversation is being recorded and broadcast to a lot of people. I don't want that to be the place that it ends. I want this and the way that I think, again, per, business is very personal to me because I do see that as modern business people, there in some ways isn't a lot of difference between your personal life and your business life. Yes, you're dedicating and doing things that you think are going to produce some sort of output, but I could be doing that in any number of businesses. Um, why I choose to do it with this group of people and then you know bringing you in is because this group of people is doing the same thing culturally to get to a better place. Um, and I think that as we have more, you know, right now we have 25 people, as we have 50 people, I want all 50 of those people to have that ripple effect. I want to be able to mentor businesses that are able to then have that ripple effect in their company and then they hire people and then we're all doing this thing. And I think that over a period of time, it becomes, dare I say movement because movements are already happening, but it becomes tangible and it becomes something that in a way is unspoken because it's the way to do it right. And that's what, that's my 60 seconds on where I think, you know, unity outside of this conversation can go. And I would love, you know, uh, Kevin Mackey, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm not really yes. on Facebook. So, uh, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I love this type of conversation. Challenge me, push me, because um, the way that we are all going to get better um, is by having these conversations and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and open. So with that, Nick, I will thank you for allowing me uh, to be on this program and to share some of my thoughts because they matter to me. Um, mm -hmm. You matter to me and us collectively just doing a better job actually really matters to me. So thank you.
Yeah, no, not a problem. I was actually going to ask you to plug yourself at the end. I know for me, and, and this is 1000% one, I thank you for being here. And then two, I can't have unity with you unless I have unity with myself. Like I can't be in a situation where I, I, I am unifying with you until I know what's native to me. I know what my identity is and I know how I can use, plug in this identity within the greater culture. Thank you so much for being here, Kevin. Have a phenomenal day. And let's stay together. Absolutely. See you later.